Dit is Papa Alpha 0 Eco Tingo Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag, 2 april 2016. Dit is het bulletin van zaterdag. As always in weekends, today's broadcast will be in English. We start with a horrific event where the first ship of New Zealand's only offshore pirate radio, Radio Horaki, had run aground with the microphones open all until abandoned ship and after. And after that we have a small item on numbers stations. We conclude the bulletin today with Morse code as some data in APSK 1000 at 1500 Hz with part 3 of amateur radio history and an SSTV image. Only two offshore radio stations remained in the whole world. Radio Veronica off the Dutch coast and on the other side of the world, Radio Horaki off New Zealand. Horaki had had its problems as well. Its first vessel, Tiri 1, had gone aground in heavy seas and become a total loss in January 1968. Its listeners heard of its plight live in the Tiri 1's last dramatic broadcast. We're endeavouring to anchor on the rock and we're going to send up a flare. Anyone observes this flare or anyone who knows anyone who's in the area, would they please advise them? Would anyone also listening please advise Auckland Radio at Music Point by telephone of our press and tell them that we... This is BMV Tiri. We're on the rocks on the Wanga Path side of Great Barrier Island. We're endeavouring to anchor on the rocks. And we're going to send up a flare. Anyone observes this flare? Or anyone who knows anyone who's in the area, would they please advise them? We're going back under the rocks now. I'll repeat that. We're receiving your frequency 2182. Receiving your frequency 2182. We have gone aground. Uh, near the entrance to the Wonga Power Harbour. The Wonga Power Harbour on Great Barrier Island. We have gone aground on the entrance to the Wonga Power Harbour on Great Barrier Island. We've hit, we're hitting, we're hitting continuously now. I don't know how long I can stay with you. There yeah, we've gone again. That was about a day, actually. Um, we've gone aground on Wonga... There. Yeah. Abandoned ship. Abandoned ship. I'm turning the microphone up now. Abandoned ship. Abandoned ship. The siren has gone. We are abandoning ship. The siren has gone. We are abandoning ship. The rocks are within swimming. I've got to go now. I'll turn the microphone up loud. I hope the transmitter holds out. We are abandoning ship. Uh, situ- uh, our position is in the Wonga Power Harbour. I love you, Mum and Dad. By the way, everyone on board survived this ordeal, though two years later the station went legal and as it set sail to Auckland during celebrations on board, announcer Rick Grant fell overboard and was never accounted for. If you have a shortwave radio, try scanning the dial some night and listen for something like this. Three, nine, seven, one, five. Three... This is a recording of an actual transmission from a so-called number station. You can find these transmissions all over the shortwave spectrum. And usually it's a voice reading out an endless string of numbers, sometimes in English, sometimes Spanish, German, Czech, even Morse code. And it's long been thought that these stations play an important role in international espionage. In fact, the Russian spies recently arrested may have been getting their orders from Moscow through those transmissions. Mark Stout is a former CIA man. He's now the official historian for the International Spy Museum here in Washington, and he joins me in the studio. Welcome. Thank you very much. Pleasure Uh, to be here. uh, So, Mark, explain how these number stations work. Well, as you could probably hear from the clip we just played, uh, they're not actual human beings typically these days. They're they're automated. They're voice simulators. Beyond that, it's uh, all a little mysterious. Uh, These stations are unlicensed, uh, so it's often not really clear where the physical transmitters are, and short waves bounce back and forth quite a number of times uh, between the ionosphere and the Earth, which is what makes them easy to to receive the signal at a long distance, but it also makes them hard to geolocate. So uh, That that was my question. I mean, short wave, we think of it as such an antiquated technology, so why... 
bother with shortwave? Well, there's actually a lot to be said from an espionage point of view for shortwave radio. First off, because it can be broadcast over such an enormous area, you can be transmitting to, to an agent who may be thousands of miles away. And secondly, most of the modern communications techniques involving computers and that sort of thing leave behind traces. It's really hard to erase data off of your hard drive or out of a, out of a memory stick. But all you need here, however, is a shortwave radio and pencil and paper. And paper is easy to destroy, and the shortwave radio in and of itself is not incriminating. Millions and millions of people around the world have them. Uh, now, we know uh, there was a case of some spies here in the U.S. Caught in, the, in the past few years spying for Cuba. They were apparently listening to a transmission in Spanish. Presumably, uh, spies uh, are told when to listen to these stations? That's absolutely right. They're given a uh, schedule on which to tune into a particular frequency, and the broadcast will usually uh, include some sort of header, basically meaning the message is now starting, and then they'll read off the numbers. They'll write them down. Um, one of two things happens then. Either they decrypt these messages literally using pencil and paper, which is far more secure. Interestingly enough, however, the Cubans have used a different technique of uh, decrypting these uh, using computer diskettes, which meant that the data went onto the computers of these individuals, which turned out to be a security problem for mm -hmm. them later when the FBI started uh, uh, entering their homes and searching their computers. From a cryptographic point of view, it doesn't make any difference. But from a security point of view, you don't want to put this stuff mm -hmm. on your computer. How long has this been going on? Well, that's an interesting question. No one's really quite sure at least since the early Cold War. There are some suggestions that this may have been tried uh, during World War II, but those stories I, I've been unable to pin down, and frankly, I'm skeptical. The underlying cryptologic technique of uh, what's called a one-time pad is actually a technology that was invented in 1917 by a U.S. Army officer who actually in his post-war life went on to uh, invent Muzak. Uh. Uh, but the number stations themselves appear to be a Cold War invention. Uh, anybody can go to, uh, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, to their shortwave radio if they have one and, and hear these. So what what's to stop me from or you from listening and then intercepting these messages? Nothing's going to stop you from intercepting them. Uh, <laughs> you know, thousands of uh, enthusiasts around the world do that on a, on a daily basis. But just getting the transmission doesn't mean that you can read it. And in fact, this one-time pad technology is literally the world's only unbreakable cipher system, you really, truly, cryptanalytically have no traction getting into a one-time pad system, none at all. So if someone listening has a shortwave radio and they want to see if they can find one of these stations, where, where should they look? Well, you can just uh, scan the dial and you're likely to find it. Uh, a better way, frankly, is to go to the Internet. And there are a number of websites of people who monitor these stations. And you can go there and literally look up stations we expect are on the air right now, and they'll give you frequencies to tune into. So it's actually really quite easy. That's Mark Stout. He's a former CIA officer. He's now the official historian at the International Spy Museum. Mark Stout, thanks so much for coming in. My pleasure.
By the way, this weekend internet radio station Shorties FM will have offshore radio and number stations as a theme with a lot to hear on these subjects. Shorties FM can be heard on fm.shorties.nl fm.shorties.nl Dit hele weekend items over zeezenders en nummerstations op het internetradiostation Shorties FM. Shorties FM is te beluisteren op fm.shorties.nl <tied> 